the heart of Europe, on the border between Slovakia and Poland, there is a mountain range which forms the highest part of the Carpathian Arc. For thousands of years, the majestic nature of this place has been giving feelings of intense beauty to its visitors. A place of national pride, its unbridled wilderness is sure to take your heart away. We call them the Little Big Mountain Range, the High Tatras. The Tatras cover an area of more than 340 square kilometers, of which more than three quarters lie in Slovakia. The High Tatras National Park is the oldest national park in the country. In 1993, together with the Polish part of the Tatras, UNESCO declared the High Tatras a biospheric reserve with enhanced protection. The core of these mountains came into being a long time ago, sometime during the Paleozoic, more than 200 million years ago. It's simply hard to believe that during this period, the area was completely submerged in the sea. The Tatras became part of the mainland in the Cretaceous period, roughly 100 million years ago. Their vertical growth began only relatively recently, about 12 million years ago. Thanks to this, Today we can find 29 peaks exceeding 2,500 meters above sea level, which allows us to categorize the Tatras as high mountains. Of course, the highest peaks come with myriads of lower hills. Together, they form the main ridge of the mountains, which is 26 kilometers long. The first settlement of the High Tatras and the surrounding region dates back to the period around 8,000 years BC. For many years, people thought that the highest mountain is either Krivan or Lomnitsky Peak. Only in the 19th century, it was discovered that the actual highest point of the Tatras, and hence of the entire Carpathian Arc, is the Gerlach Peak boasting an altitude of 2,655 meters above sea level. Even though the peak is said to have been a popular tourist destination as soon as the 18th century, the first documented climb to its summit took place in 1834. The inherent counterparts of the peaks are the valleys stretching between them. In total, there are 35 valleys and the longest ones, Koprova and Bielovatska, are almost 12 kilometers long. Valleys in the north of the Tatras were shaped by glacier activity to a greater extent than those in the south. Consequently, their floors have lower elevation than the southern ones, shaped by smaller glaciers. Glaciers retreated roughly 10,000 years ago, but some of them, covered in rubble, have been preserved to this day. In the valleys, there are countless springs and streams that lead to the Black and the Baltic Sea. In one of them, there is water falling from a height of 80 meters forming the highest waterfall in Slovakia, Kmetov Waterfall. It is located at an altitude of 1245 meters above sea level. Much better known is its sibling in the Mlinitska Valley, the Skok Waterfall, which flows from the tarn above it, jumping from a height of approximately 30 meters. In most valleys, there are also glacial lakes, tarns. The largest and at the same time the deepest tarn on the Slovak side of the Tatras is situated 1946 meters above sea level, and its name is Velke Hintsovo Pleso. Its depth is almost 54 meters, with an area of more than 50 acres.
In the Tatras, there are more than 120 tarns, mostly filled with clean, transparent water with excellent visibility. The crystal clear water flows from springs above the tarns, but also from the snow cover, which sometimes stays for more than 250 days a year. On average, the surface of hints of a plaza is covered with ice for 270 days of the year. Only murmuring water occasionally breaks through the layer of snow, in some places several meters thick. During these days, nature is resting and preparing for the next growing season. Frost can get very strong in this part of the year. The temperature may drop to an extreme of minus 30 degrees Celsius. Strong wind often joins the extreme cold, making life in the mountains even more difficult. Apparent temperature decreases with increasing wind speed. Every meter per second lowers the apparent temperature by 1 degree Celsius. The highest measured wind speed in the Tatras was almost 79 meters per second which is 283 kilometers per hour. Such speed is classified as a storm with devastating effects. In many cases, this was no overstatement. Strong winds in the Tatras cause many calamity situations. One of the most devastating instances happened in 2004, when even massive spruce trees were ripped from the ground by the force of the wind. It destroyed a forest area of more than 30,000 acres, which is approximately the area of 20,000 soccer fields. However, not even this calamity managed to harm the beauty of the Tatras. Quite the contrary. It created an opportunity for a young forest, which is currently working its way up from among the old tree stumps. The Tatras are beautiful, but their unbridled beauty can get tricky. Every year, many people who underestimate the fragility of human life learn this lesson. Since 2002, it proved fatal for more than 100 tourists. But this does not discourage thousands of visitors relentlessly traveling to see with their own eyes the vast spruce forests fields of creeping pines at the feet of the mountains, sun-drenched mountain lakes and streams where they can, for a moment, feel like a part of this unique, singular ecosystem which deserves the strictest protection. Those are the High Tatras.